Vasudeva. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. <clears throat> so thank you very much for the very nice reception. Only South Indian people know how to properly offer such a nice reception. I feel unworthy, unqualified. It's a very auspicious day, of course. We're celebrating this uh, completion of the essence of the Bhagavad Gita course. So I think this is the second time you've gone through the Bhagavad Gita. Very wonderful. So I'm going to speak about the practical value of the Bhagavad Gita in our daily life for a little while. Bhagavad Gita. We call it the song of God. Actually, God is in the heart of all of us and he's singing to us. He's speaking to all of us through the Bhagavad Gita. We may not hear the Lord speaking in the heart, but we have his words for us immortalized in the text of the Bhagavad Gita. So it's certainly very great fortune for all of the participants in this course that you had the opportunity to go through on the one chapter a day and in this way enter deeply into the meaning and the significance of Bhagavad Gita. People may question, is it really important for us, the Bhagavad Gita? Well, I always, you know, when I think of Malaysia, I always remember how much importance people in Malaysia give to education. They will spend so much for education. The real education is actually there in the Bhagavad Gita. If we read the Bhagavad Gita, we can get the most essential of all knowledge. That knowledge which will help us to answer all the questions of life. I remember myself as a young seeker of the truth. I had in my student life, I had many questions. I could, I had met so many questions. I could never get any answers. People would, nobody could give me answers. But after coming to Bhagavad Gita, everything is there, all my answers. All the questions I may have, I'll find the answers are there in the Bhagavad Gita. Wherever you open the book, you just have to read it. You can open the book anywhere and read and you'll get the answers to whatever, any, any question you may have. But that is the nature of the Bhagavad Gita. It is very practical knowledge for us also. It teaches us how we should live in this world how we should, first of all, understand our own self as a person. Because we often think of ourselves. we look at ourselves. we think this is me, I'm the body, we see ourselves in the body. We don't actually understand our real person, the real person within, which is the soul. So the Bhagavad Gita teaches us to understand ourselves not just simply as a body, but to see ourselves as that soul. And then Bhagavad Gita goes on to explain more about the nature of that soul and how it has an eternal relationship with the Supreme Lord, Lord Sri Krishna, who is the speaker of the Bhagavad Gita. So it's very important for us to hear from Krishna. As I said, he's in our heart and he's speaking to us, but we're not hearing. Therefore, he came himself most recently, 5,000 years ago, to speak Bhagavad Gita. And by the grace of Vyas, these words have been recorded. And by the grace of Srila Prabhupada and all the Acharyas, we have their commentaries on the words of Lord Krishna. These teachings of the Bhagavad Gita help us to understand the, the real mission of life. Why are we here? 
where are we going what what is happening to us why are things like this we will have so many questions so many things we cannot understand but if we read bhagavad gita then everything becomes clear just like when the sun rises in the morning then the darkness of night is over so ignorance is like darkness and when we hear from lord krishna then he opens our eyes with the torchlight of knowledge that we can actually see the reality of the world we can see the nature of each and every living entity and we can see them in a loving and harmonious way where where from the bhagavad gita we learn to respect all forms of life and to see them all as our brothers and sisters because we are all parts and parcels of the supreme lord shri krishna so we get this kind of information from bhagavad gita lord krishna also teaches us for example at the end of the fifth chapter in one sloka lord krishna has given us a simple formula for peace we give a lot of importance for peace we would like to have peace of mind people often say oh i have no peace i can't get any peace so just read the bhagavad gita you read the final verse of the fifth chapter and lord krishna is describing the formula for peace if we simply understand lord krishna as the supreme proprietor and as the supreme enjoyer and as the best friend then we will get peace actually we all want to have a, a friend a real friend who will be with us who will always be with us and that real friend is lord shri krishna in the course of our life different friends come and go but lord krishna is always with us as the super soul and his words are always with us in the form of bhagavad gita therefore we encourage the devotees you know memorize some of these different verses from the bhagavad gita and start to say them again and again so we try to recite one chapter a day that's a good recipe for remembering bhagavad gita recite one chapter a day a chapter a day will keep us healthy if you can't read one chapter a day then even one sloka a day you can finish the bhagavad gita in less than 2 years it's not such a big book it's quite small the chapters are not very long some of the chapters are very short even but they're very meaningful they have a lot of truth in them they help us to understand the world and to see the reality in this world to understand what is life this kind of knowledge this education we don't get there's no institution providing this kind of spiritual knowledge to the students it's all mundane material knowledge you know it, it changes so fast it goes out of date what i learned when i was a student is all forgotten about there's whole new technologies in and in the future there'll be other technologies but the nature of life is the same the message of bhagavad gita is perennial knowledge it means it's eternal knowledge and it's for everyone in every walk of life not just for this planet but all over the creation the word of the supreme lord bhagavan shri krishna is very significant and very beneficial for everyone we hear it and it gives us something to think about it helps us to cultivate that relationship with lord krishna 
as I said, he's our best friend. He's a very dear friend of all of us. And he's in our heart. He's directing us. He's trying to help us. He's inviting all of us to come closer to him. And that's why he came 5,000 years ago to speak Bhagavad Gita. So we are very fortunate to have this wonderful course, the essence of Bhagavad Gita. Everyone had an opportunity to go deeper into the message of the Bhagavad Gita and to give it more meaning. And we hope you will continue to apply this knowledge, not just simply take part in the course, you know, like we study at school, then it's finished, we forget everything. But rather, what you've heard, what you've learned in the course of this uh, last two weeks, which you've been studying, Bhagavad Gita, we want you to apply it, to take it, may put it into your life on a daily basis. Think about what Krishna said. How did, what was Arjuna's question? How did Krishna reply? Remembering these kind of things, it's very important for all of us, very beneficial. It helps us all to come to a higher level of consciousness. We're all conscious, but often we're, our consciousness is just simply on the body. But by the message of Bhagavad Gita, we can elevate the consciousness to the higher platform, higher even than the mind and intelligence, bringing our consciousness to the spiritual platform. Something which we'd never hardly thought about before until we started reading Bhagavad Gita. So this is very powerful and very important for us to put into our daily life, to think about this message of Bhagavad Gita. Keep your Bhagavad Gita with you. Nowadays, everybody has a handphone. Put the Bhagavad Gita in your handphone. You can have a soft copy in your mobile phone. You can be hearing the slokas from the Bhagavad Gita and you can be reciting. And in this way, we make our life more meaningful. We actually experience peace. And that peace goes on, it becomes transcendental pleasure. We can experience a happiness which we'd never even dreamt about just by understanding Bhagavad Gita. So I'll stop here. Thank you very much. Very happy to have the opportunity to speak to all of you. And I look forward to seeing you all in the future. Srimad Bhagavad Gita Ki Jai. Thank you very much, Maharaj, for your inspirational spiritual discourse on the Bhagavad Gita. Uh, we would like to invite His Grace Tyaga Chaitanya Prabhu to thank Maharaj. Hare Krishna Maharaj. So it was so wonderful to hear that you had so beautifully summarized the Bhagavad Gita to all these wonderful students. This Gita again has taken Malaysia by a storm and we are moving. But what's best of all this evening, Maharaj, you have been able to summarize at the same time, given the direction to all those who went through the course to say, this is the way to go forward. So on behalf of the organizing team, on behalf of all the students who are graduating today, Maharaj, we sincerely thank you from the bottom of our heart because you have always been with us, you've always supported us, and you've always been there for all our activities. So on behalf of the Malaysian Yatra, to the facilitators, as well as to the students, we take this opportunity and say, Thank you very much, Maharaj, for doing us this wonderful, wonderful entrance into the Bhagavad Gita and at the same time, the way forward. Thank you, His Holiness, Narsingha Maharaj, Ki Jai. Srila Prabhupada, Ki Jai.